What's going on, you guys? So Grand Tactician posted a new dev blog. This one's actually a guest blog with Felipe. It's going to be hard to pronounce this. Thibaut? <laughs> Hopefully I got that right. This guy actually was the head of Civil War 2, which right now is my favorite Civil War strategy game ever made. It, to me, right now is the best Civil War strategy game ever made. Now, come, you know, Grand Tactician's launch of, you know, Civil War 1861 to 1865, that might change. But for right now, <laughs> Civil War 2 is my favorite strategy game. And I actually had the honor of interviewing Felipe, I believe, about six, seven years ago at Historicon. And I was very motivated about interviewing him because I was following Civil War II at that point, And I just had this gut feeling that it was going to be an incredible game. And it definitely became an incredible game. So let's take a look and see what we have here. First, let's take a look at this beautiful screenshot. So, this is nice. All right, so I guess this is kind of like the initial screen, like, you know, the where you start, right? The loading screen here, because you got like 1861, 1862, start new, continue. Gives you bonuses, AI aggressiveness. Ooh, I can choose AI aggressiveness. Definitely like kick that up for the South. All right, in this dev blog, we have a very special guest writer. So far, we have not shown the game to outsiders of the development team, except in the official updates like these dev blogs. But when a renowned strategy game designer, Felipe Thibault, asked to have a look at the game, well, you show the game. <laughs> you may know Felipe as author and designer of the original board game and PC title, Universalis. I did not know that he did that. That's awesome. Or the founder and lead designer of Ajod, including titles like Birth of America, which, <laughs> again, Birth of America is my favorite American Revolution strategy game. Whenever I want to play like a, a American Revolution strategy game, that's where I go. Civil War and the gigantic Civil War II, the most comprehensive strategy game of the American Civil War today. That's absolutely correct. So let Felipe himself describe his first impressions and having a look at Grand Tacticians, the Civil War 1861-65, this is the alpha version, campaign and battle gameplay behind the scenes. Ooh, there's another screenshot here. Let's take a look. You got something here. This is a sad day for us, Colonel. Sad that we can't always expect to gain victories. Ah, interesting. I did not know that he said that. Tonight, I was very lucky. I had the honor to have a personal presentation of a brand new game, Grand Tacticians, directly by its lead designer and author. I'm going to have a harder pr uh, time pronouncing this. I don't want to screw up anybody's name. So, Ilya Varha. So if I mispronounce that, my apologies. First impressions, well, I am missing words. Maybe, whoa, <laughs> is looking most appropriate. I have been in video games for the last 22 years, worked on Europa Universalis and all Aja titles and many more other games like the one I am doing now with, with my new venture, Avalon Digital. I have played many monster games, including a Total War Saga, but I must say that I am baffled. This is, in my opinion, based on what I just saw, probably the best grand strategy game I've seen so far. Look at that. Oh, man. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's high, high praise coming from such a renowned and, and a legendary developer like he is. And it's everything you can desire and dream of in such an adventure. The level of detail and the clarity and precision of the content is stunning. I thought we have done a lot in Age Odds American Civil War, but these guys did better. The content is impressive. No worry. It took so much time to design and produce. This is a treasure chest of for any Civil War historian. Wow. But even better, the game is exactly what a grand strategy game should be. You are not controlling everything. Far from it. But if you find yourself playing with two main, two main levels of personification. All right. Here we got another juicy screenshot. All right. So, okay. I like introducing inscription like here all right so these are the confederate policies nice love how like beautiful it is like everything about this game is just gorgeous man the map the ui i mean it's just wow first at the grand strategic level you are the key member of the nation's war cabinet you intervene on a lot of fields from domestic policy to trade acts to foreign diplomacy or industrial contact of the war effort you are immersed in the huge task of creating your army from scratch. I saw the early 1862 Union side, and you decide where to where to conscript, 
which units to raise, which commanders to appoint or unload that. The game has an encyclopedia list of over 1,300 commanders. Whoa. That's, that's a lot of commanders. Wow. To assign to various commands, both on land and at sea. Wow. I'm just shocked. Wow. Fortunately for the non-micromanagement fans like me, a lot can be delegated to the AI like running the economy. And that's better like this. Speaking of economy, remember we are in the land of free enterprise. So this show is run by private business and it's both realistic and ideal. No burden of choosing which title, which little stupid building to build here or there. Okay, that's good. Second, you also get in command of operational and semi-tactical levels. You have a wide range of realistic options and orders at your disposal at the Army's high command. And you shall have to decide on many issues and choices, such as training troops, choosing deployment postures, or trans-theater transfers. Ooh, preparing to battle is almost as important, if not more, as running the fight itself. Oh, wow. Knowing, well exactly learning, like most commanders at the time, how to dispose and disper disperse your core and divisions, how to make sure they can march to the sound of the guns in good order, how to dispatch your orders so that they can be reached and executed in time. I love that aspect of this game. It takes something from Scourge of War where if you want to issue an order to like a division that's you know on the opposite side of the field, it's not instant because obviously you're going to have to write the order right and then give it to a rider and then the rider has to go find it. That's why they had those flags in the Civil War so you can easily spot where the commander is. And I love that. It adds so much realism to it. So yeah, I, I really love that feature in, in, in Scourge of War. The list is as long as the Civil War general agenda, all beautifully displayed in great art style. Yeah, that's beautiful. Another screenshot. This is beautiful. At last, And last but not least, even for a grand strategy, only amateur like me, the part where you jump into the fray, finding yourself on the battlefield is even better, though. You enjoy, if I could say, the format, the torment of General Me trying to guess where the Rebs are on this day of July 1863, and more generally trying to sort out reports in the midst of a very well rendered fog of war. Weather constraints, fatigue, and disorganization. You really feel you are there, and it's almost disturbingly real. I love that. That to me is like one of the best things, the fog of war, you know, because like you're moving your troops and if there was no fog of war, it's, it takes a little bit of the fun out, that like that danger, that like, you know, your edge of your seat kind of action. Love the fact that like when I'm playing this game, I'm going to see some rebels here and I'm going to move my forces in and I'm going to be like, wait, hold on, hold on. Before I do that, are they also moving around here to try to flank me? Are they coming down this road? Should I put scouts up here? I, I need to put scouts here, maybe a scout here, so this way I don't get flanked kind of thing. I love that. Nice. Look at the map, man. You even see, like, paper creases. Look at this, man. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. And we're next to June, so like it's coming out in this summer. I, I can't believe it. It's just... Uh, I mean, look. It's just gorgeous, man. It's just like even like... Look, look at it like this. I mean, it's just insane. Wow. We spent three hours on the game. I had the impression it lasted ten minutes. So big was my astonish astonishment and marvel at such a vast game i would even dare say a masterpiece i even wonder if i should take the risk of playing that game it would capture my mind and soul and i could not leave it i wish i had the means knowledge and tools to have done something like that before but my game was 13 years ago and eternity bravo guys keep up the good work you just did immensely great and i expect a huge success for your game yeah it's it's gonna be absolutely insane we are without machinery, without means, and threatened by a powerful opposition, but I do not despond and will not shrink from the task imposed upon me. See, this is what I love about Grand Tactician, and this is what I love about Felipe's Ajod and, and all the projects and teams that he's worked on, is the passion behind it. You know, like, for this developer to go in and say, look, we want a paper map, and we want, you know, let, let's make it very nice. So let's, you know, do stuff like this and make, you know, the, the kind of forest, the woods kind of like this. And you know what? I want it to be so realistic. I want it to be so beautiful. We're going to even add creases to give that impression, that, that realism. I mean, you have to have 
some passion and love. Not even some. You have to have a lot of passion and love for what you do. These guys making Grand Tacticians Civil War are just like heroes, legends in my book. And I, I haven't even played the game. But just looking at these screenshots, dude, just the dev blocks, the, the video of it, it's just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Every time I read, every time I learn more about it, it just, like, my jaw just, like, drops. I, I just, I, I get so motivated about it, guys, because, you know, like, everything I wanted in a Civil War game, a campaign side like this, a, a, a tactical side like this, you know, and then mixing them together, you know. And there have been great games in the past, like Scourge of War, Civil War II. Civil War II is the best strategic level strategy, Civil War strategy game. And then you have the Scourge of War series, which is one of the best tactical, you know, simulations for uh, Civil War. And, you know, they're all great. But I wanted them kind of mixed together, you know, and to make one game. And this is, this is it. This is it. And then it takes even a further, and it even takes it, beyond that because there's so many things like 1300 commanders wow and then being able to move the order of battle around the weather the i just it just blows my mind to be honest i i just wow i'm just wowed so oh i also want to mention a, a huge props to felipe because when civil war ii came out I didn't know about this, but when I launched the game, it had something like on the top left of the screen. It said uh, Civil War Trust. And when I read more about it, it said that every copy that you purchased of the Civil War II, there was a donation that was going to be made to the Civil War Trust. And I found out more about the Civil War Trust. Civil War Trust is preserving our Civil War battlefields. You know, they're doing incredible things. If you guys never heard of them, they're actually now called American Battlefield Trust. They, they just changed their name because now they do American Revolution and War of 1812 too. If you guys haven't heard of them, I would recommend going to their website. Become a member. I've, you know, I, I became a member, I think, when uh, Felipe added that to uh, this, onto this game and then I quickly became a member because these guys preserve our Civil War battlefields because... You know, you have a good example is like in Gettysburg. They're trying to, they were trying to numerous times to put a casino right on Cemetery Ridge. Like, I kid you not, right on Cemetery Ridge. And I was just like, what? And you have the Civil War Trust and the Gettysburg Foundation that fight that and buy up land that's private and then give it back to the government to add to the national battlefield. Without the Civil War Trust... I, I came and began to tell you, like, you would probably go to a Civil War battlefield and be like, wow, this is where Pickett's charges, and that's where the casino is. So let's go inside the casino and play a couple. You know, it's just like, like, who who does that? Like, but anyway, I'm not going to, like, go into the politics of it. But, yeah, so big props to Felipe for doing that. And Grand Tactician, you guys, I'm telling you, this game is going to be legendary. I mean, it's good. Yeah, I've watched a lot of How I Met Your Mother, but this, oh man, it's just, mm, cannot wait. I cannot wait. And when this game launches, I'm going to see if I can get them back on the Single Mall Strategy Podcast because I want to do an interview with these guys because like, these guys are my heroes. I'm just going to say it straight up. These guys are my heroes. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this. Catch you in the next one.